strong, brave, vibrant, breathtaking, passionate, fiery. All words to describe Maria Talchief, a Native American ballerina who took a stand and changed the world. The dance world, that is. Maria Talchief was a revolutionary American ballerina who broke barriers for the Native American women. She was extremely talented and always possible. But it didn't start out this way. Betty Marie Talchief, now known as Maria Talchief, was born on January 24, 1925, in Fairfax, Oklahoma, to two loving parents, Ruth and Alexander Talchief. The Talchiefs lived on the Oak Hedge Indian Reservation. According to her mother, Maria was a fussy child. She loved to move and constantly was full of energy. In an interview with the New York Times, Tal Chief stated, I remember when I was just three years old. My mother would sit me down on her old piano bench and tell me to try and play a song I heard at the tribal dance ceremony. She tried anything that would keep me busy. I believe that is how I learned to be so creative. Maria spent many hours at Osage dances with her parents, her sister, and her brother. Her father was a huge part of the Osage tribe. The tall chiefs were heavily invested in their culture. Maria's mother, Ruth, loved hearing Maria play the piano. She decided that Maria must have piano lessons and believed that one day she would play in concerts all over the world. But Maria loved to dance. She would skip around the house humming the tune she most recently learned to play on the piano. At age four, Maria and her sister Marjorie took ballet lessons. In 1933, when Maria was only eight years old, the Tall Chief family moved to Beverly Hills, California. Her parents saw the spark of talent in both daughters and believed the better teachers lived in the West. Once the Tall Chief settled in California, Mary and Marjorie continued ballet and piano lessons seriously. Such intense practices left little time for fun and play. In high school, Maria spent even more time studying, dancing, and playing the piano. By this time, the sisters were taking lessons from the most prestigious schools and instructors. Growing up, Madame Ninjinska, a world-renowned teacher, became a favorite of the Tal Chief girls. When Maria graduated high school, she was off to New York City in hopes of snagging a job offer. Once in New York, Maria continued to practice and work hard as she waited for her shot to audition for a big ballet company. A year later, her sister came to join her in the big city. After years of working, Maria finally got the call she was waiting for. On the phone was Sergei Denham, director of the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo, personally inviting her to join the company. Maria was enthused and happily accepted the offer. Ballet life was difficult. Maria spent her time traveling around the world with the company. She continued to improve and work hard. As a result, Tal Chief was a better dancer. She was moving up in the ranks. The public started to notice her. The company wanted Maria to choose an easier name for the public to remember. She refused. Her contract was even compromised when she refused to change her name from Tal Chief. She was proud of her heritage and where she came from. Maria wanted everyone to know who she was, so she kept her name. As time went on, Maria only got better. She was lively and fast. She could whip out turns in the air and land on her feet with ease. Everything she did was clean and precise. The audience loved her. Soon enough, shows sold out when Maria was dancing. Newspaper reporters called her the beautiful dancing Osage princess. In 1946, Maria married George Balanchine. Balanchine was Maria's choreographer with the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo. He fell in love with her, like everyone else did. The two soon broke off and formed their own ballet company, the New York City Ballet. Maria was crowned the company's prima dancer this marking the first prima ballerina in history. She was America's prima ballerina. Maria was getting a lot of attention from everyone. 
Her fans would wait in lines after the performances to see her and bring flowers. Among all of this, she managed to stay humble. Maria spoke to the audience after a performance and said, As I continue to do what I love up here on the stage for all of you, I want to be appreciated as a prima ballerina who happened to be a Native American, never as someone who was a Native American ballerina. George Balanchine created many roles for Maria. Most famously, she was lead in a ballet called The Firebird. It's the story of a beautiful bird with magical powers. Her costume was bright red and orange. That sparkling costume called attention to her, as if she didn't have enough. Even though Maria's career was going very well, her marriage with Balanchine was failing. After several years of marriage, they were divorced, but continued to work together as partners. In June of 1953, the state of Oklahoma honored Maria. They made a special holiday in her name, Maria Tall Chief Day, which falls on her birthday in January each year. In 1996, Tall Chief became one of only five artists to receive the Kennedy Center honors for their artistic contributions in the United States. That same year, Maria was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame and is still there to this day. In 1999, Tall Chief was awarded the National Medal of Art, the highest award given to artists and art patrons by the U.S. government, which honors individuals who are deserving of special recognition by reason of their outstanding contributions to the excellent growth, support, and availability of the arts in the United States. Only three years later, Maria was remarried to Henry Passion, and in 1959, they had a daughter, Elise. Soon, Maria took a job at the American Ballet Theater in New York. She toured all over Europe and Russia for cheering audiences, but Maria was growing tired of traveling so much. She missed her family and her tribe at home. She retired at the age of 41. This did not mean the end of dancing forever for Maria. She couldn't stay away from it. In 1980, she started the Chicago Ballet with her sister Marjorie and worked together for nine years. Maria was always active with the arts up until her death in 2013. Even though Maria is no longer a part of the dance world anymore, her story still touches young, aspiring dancers each and every day. Maria broke barriers, took a stand, and left an incredible legacy. She was strong, brave, Vibrant, breathtaking, passionate, and fiery, she was Maria Talchief. <laughs>